Hello Morales community, my name is Joseph and I am your Web3 instructor. I'm back here with another video using the Morales API. This time we're using the block API and the get block endpoint. Now with this endpoint we can get all the block information by its hash or by its block number and we get information such as transactions, uh, gas prices, gas fees and so on and so on. Now, before I show you the documentation and before we jump into the code, let me demonstrate the application one, one time and then show you how we can build it together. So, I've prepared this application with Next.js for the front end and with Node and Express for the back end. So, let's paste a block number in there and choose Ethereum. So, once we hit submit, we can see uh, some block content for the specific block that we provided. So in my case, I decided to display different kinds of transactions from this blog and the date of the transactions, uh, from which address, how much the gas price was at the time, and then also the transaction hash, which we can copy and go to Etherscan, paste that in to get uh, all the data about this transaction. We can see in here that this transaction uh, belongs to the block number that ends with 33 21 and if we go back we can see that that's actually the block number we provided now if this is interesting enough stay stuck in and i will show you how to build this now let's first go to the morales api for this endpoint and see the different parameters that we have and how we can play around with it so in here you can actually try it out by pasting a block number or a block hash and hit the try it and below there, we will have the response that we're actually getting back. So from here, we can see that we have some uh, block data. And below that, in the transactions array, we have the specific data that we are displaying in, in our application. And this is for every transaction. So uh, for every transaction, you have like hash um, from and to address. You have the gas price, which block number it uh, belongs to. And then you have a log for each and every transaction. Now for this endpoint, the block number or the block hash is required, but then you can also use the chain parameter. Um, by default, this will be Ethereum. And you also have subdomain, which is used for if you have a local dev chain. Now for our application, we're going to use Node, but if you want to use another backend language, you can choose your own preferences from up here or from this drop down menu. Now, even if you're using node with Morales, you have a few options. In our case, I'm using Morales uh, node.js SDK. So that uh, means that we have to install Morales and EVM chain. But if you want to use uh, libraries like Axios, you can do that like this, or um, let's say node fetch, then you can do it like this. So let's stick with the Morales node.js SDK. And we have basically copied this uh, rows from here, paste that in in our application and just modify it a little bit to make it more flexible with the input fields that we have. So let's jump straight into the code. So in here we have one root folder, which is the get content of a block. And inside this folder, we have two more folders, one for the back end and one for the front end. Now let's start with the back end and a good starting point would be the package JSON. Because from here, you can see that we have installed course.env because we don't want to show our API key up front. We have installed Express because our server is an Express server. And then also Morales because we're going to use the Morales SDK to make this API call. Now, let's go to index.js. And from here, you can see that we are actually firing up an Express server. In my case, I've chosen the port number of 5001. Now, we have to require the .env because we don't want to use, as I said before, our API key up front. We want to have these keywords right here and then store our API key in a .env file. And you can create this file in the root of the backend folder. Now in here, you can choose your uh, variable name. I've chosen Morales API key. And if you don't have your own API key, make sure you go to morales.io and hit start for free. 
there you will create your free account i've already done that so when i hit this it's gonna take me to my uh, login page from here go to web3 apis and there you have your api key now make sure you keep this private so just copy this one let's go back to the code and paste that in oops let's save that now like this we can use this variable name in our uh, index.js file instead of pasting this one up front close this one up go back to index.js and then use the process.env keywords and then your actual variable name that you chose in the .env file now we can use this api key in the start function that morales provides us let me zoom in a little bit and like this we can use the api key to start a connection with the morales api and also start the server below that and make our api calls now for this application i have created one endpoint which is a get block and from here we are getting the parameters from the client which is the input field the block number and the drop down menu which is the chain id so we need to have those in order for us to make uh, an api call to the get block endpoint and that's how we are inputting these into that argument and once we've gotten the response back from the api we just send it back to the client to the front end as it is and there's where we are choosing what to display and what to not. So let's go straight to the front end folder instead. I'm gonna close this one down and minimize the back end. And our front end, it's built with Next.js. So let's start with package.json here as well, because I have installed Axios for us to make a fetch request to our server, and then also React Select for us to create beautiful and simple drop down menus. Our home page of the application is the index.js that contains the title. And in index.js, we're rendering two components, the header and the main. So if we start with the header, you can see that we pretty much have um, another title and then also the logo that is on the top left corner. Inside main though, it's where everything is happening. So we need to import both Axios and the React Select library for us to use them in here. For the dropdown menu, I have chosen to use three values. You can choose the same or other ones, but for me, it's Ethereum, Guerli, and Mumbai, and we need to have the respective chain ID as values. Now, if you want to use other, uh, networks you can go to docs.morales.io slash docs slash cross chain request and from here if you scroll down a little bit you have more uh, networks that you can use and their respective chain id let's go back to the application i've also added some styling for the drop down menu to make it look a little bit better now once you click the drop down menu and choose your chain id we're gonna store this value in our chain value state which is up here and we have four variables that we need to store the one is if we're going to show the result or not because we don't want to show anything if uh, the user hasn't clicked the submit button so we're stating this to false we have the result which is an empty array to start with the chain value which i showed you just how you can change it and then the block number this value is going to be taken from the input field and that's happening once the user hits the submit button, then we fire this handle submit function. Now the input field has an ID called block number. So we can query select that, that input field with its ID and then take the value from it and store it into block number. And we also want the value from the drop down menu, the chain ID itself and store it into chain. With that, we can do a get request to our server, to our backend, which is on port 5001 slash get block, because that was the endpoint we chose. And we want to pass the block number and the chain ID as parameters. So then we can extract those in the backend and use them for the API call towards Morales. Now, as I said, in the backend, when we're getting the response, we're sending it as it is to the front end. So I've console logged that one just to show you how it looks like before we destruct the object and choose 
which values and which data we want to show. So let's go back to our application right here. I'm going to open the console inspector and this is the response that we're getting back from the backend. Now inside data, you can see that this looks pretty similar to the documentation of the Morales API. And in transactions, we have all the transactions for this block. And if we're opening up the first one, we see exactly the same data as in the documentation and the logs for this transaction. Now, in our case, we want to show the date, the block number, the from hash, the gas price, and the transaction has hash. And that's everything we have in here. So we have the block number, for example, we have the address, we have the gas price, and then we have the hash and, uh, and the date we have somewhere. Timestamp. So let's go back to the code and see how we're doing that. So we don't want uh, to store the whole response. We only want data.transactions. And then we set show result to true and we want to empty our input field and our drop down menu. Now here is where we're rendering everything. So below the form and the submit button, let's jump to the section that holds the results. So as I said above, the state of the result is an array, so we can map through that and just pick out the values that we actually want, which is time. And here we don't want to show the whole time, as you can see um, right here, the, the timestamp with the actual time and so on. We just want to uh, format this a little bit better uh, and remove the unnecessary things that's included for us in this case. We want to display the block number and we can do it easily like this. And then below that, we want to have the from address, the gas price and the transaction hash. Now the gas price needs some formatting as well. So it's in GUI, so we can format it like this to get that value. So as you can see, Morales makes it very easy for us with just a few lines of code to get the block uh, data with the block transactions just by inputting the block number or the block hash. And I want to show that to you that uh, if we go back to our application, we have, um, we have the hash from the block right here. And if we paste that in, let me close this one up and update just so you can see the difference easier. If we paste that in and hit submit, you can see that this is the exact same data because it's, this, it's the hash of the same block number, but you can see that both work. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe because we share a ton of similar Web3 videos using Morales. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you post them below and I will also share the link to this GitHub repo if you want to use this application as an inspiration. I hope I will see you in the next one.